Hey guys, Jared Duckett, Duckett Ladd Dental CPAs and Advisors here again uh, with my business partner, Bill Ladd. And I've also got Paula Wall with us today, Duckett Ladd Dental Consultant. Paula, appreciate you jumping in. Good to be here. Wanted to shoot a quick video for you guys. Um, I know a lot of all small business owners, but you know, specifically dentists we work a lot with is you know the PPP, the pay, Paycheck Protection Program. Um, you know, we've gone through the application. Uh, we're hearing you know, a lot of people have gotten approved. And then now we're hearing a lot of funding's coming through. You know, maybe you got the funding last week. And what we want to do is just jump on and give our, start talking about the forgiveness side, how to track it now that you got it, what you need to do with it and all that good stuff. So Bill, I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of clients getting it, you know, and, and the question that, that you're probably hearing, I'm hearing Paul yourself too, is, Hey, I got the money. What do I do? Right. And, and so the first thing we're, we're, I mean, we're, most some banks require this, but what we're telling people is put the money. Let's say you get, let's just use an amount. Let's say you get 40,000 40, bucks, you know, or a hundred thousand bucks, whatever. We're telling people to put that in a separate bank account because the big thing with this PPP money is the forgiveness side, right? Now that you've gotten approved, the, the goal now is to get it a hundred percent forgiven on the expenses, you know, the expenditures you can use it on. So put it in a separate bank account. The whole mentality is that if it's separate, it's not, let's say, co-mingled with existing funds, it's going to be a whole lot easier to show your lender where those expenses went. Um, do you have any comments on that, Bill? Or Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're spot on. We're kind of moving from the phase of trying to understand what the PPP is, how do you calculate it, to now we kind of know that. What we will say is a brief aside, as we're sitting here on April 23rd, it does, you know, the first round was uh, run dry and uh, about a week and a half, 350 billion. It does appear there will be another uh, a round coming through. I believe it's around 320 billion. It looks like it's gonna work its way through Congress this week. Uh, so there should be more funds available. If you missed out on that first one, uh, there should be more coming. Uh, a lot of people we talked to have already had their applications in. Maybe they didn't get in that first round, but they're in the queue ready to go. So yeah, then you shift your focus to what do we do once we get the money? And, and to your point, Jared, uh, we don't have great guidance specifically exactly how the overall forgiveness is going to work. That's going to be forthcoming in the next couple of days. But what we do know is that once you get the money that to have any portion, you know, or to, to really figure out what portion you're even starting with, you know, you have to figure out how much you spend on the right stuff. You know, we kind of know what those are and we'll go over those here in a second. So realistically, before we get to any kind of uh, calculations of what can potentially reduce the amount forgivable, we have to make sure we spend the entirety of the loan on the right stuff. And so I think that's what we want to kind of talk about today is, is how do we get the base number that could potentially be forgiven to uh, be 100% of your PPP loan uh, proceeds. And that's what people want to know. They want to know what are the best practices to make sure that I can at least, you know, have a potential to forgive the entirety of that loan. And that's what we'll, what we'll unpack today. Yeah. And the whole, the whole mindset is, and maybe I said this, but at the end of that eight week covered period, you know, when you, when you've hopefully spent all the money on the required or the, the eligible expen expenditures, you can take a nice clean packet, if you will, Back yeah. to the lender who approved you and say, here, Mr. Lender, you, you, you know, here's what I spent my money on. And we want to make it as, as easy as it can be on that lender to just flip through it and say, yeah, they can easily trace stuff. If you give them a, a shoe box, if you will, full of receipts and stuff, no, that's not going to work. That lender is, that's not easy on the lender. We want to make it extremely easy on them. So what we wanted to show you real fast is, is we utilize all the clients we work with, we utilize QuickBooks, um, QuickBooks Online. And we wanted to show you what we're doing with our clients and how we're tracking it. Um, we're not saying this is the only way to do it by any means. We just think this is an easy way to utilize functions of the program um, that puts out a good output that you can take to your lender. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen really quick. And this is, this is just a generic profit and loss statement, generic dental, right? This can be for any small business. Um, we're just talking about dentists here on this, this example. But what we've done, and I'm gonna have Paula um, jump through the, or walk through the, the technical aspects of how to set this up. 
But what we've done is utilize class tracking on this client. We went in and we set up a, a, a special class for PPP. And on this specific generic client here, the PPP proceeds they received was this 42,750. They received it in April and they've already started using the proceeds on eligible expenses. Okay, and then what we do is when we pay those out, they paid out utilities, they paid out rent, they paid out compensation, they have it split here between the officer, uh, the doctor, if you will, and, and total payroll uh, or staff compensation. And they've got the payroll tax component out here, that's the state unemployment, um, not, not the employer portion of payroll taxes, but just state unemployment. You can see the employers over here. But you, you see how you can easily just go through and see of that PPP money, they've already spent $11,000. Mm -hmm. And the goal is at the end, again, this, this client, what do you think, Paul, this client probably started just last week when they received the proceeds. But right. at the end of the, of the eight week cover period, they can take this to the banker and say, okay, here's the 42 that came in. Here's all the expenses that went out that were eligible for forgiveness making sure 75% or more is on payroll. Okay, always tracking that, because at least 75%, we've gone over this in future or previous videos, but at least 75% has to be on payroll, 25% or less on the other expenses. But you can show them hopefully at the end, you've spent all 42,000 of that. Hopefully more, so that there's no doubt that you've, you know, it all should be forgiven based on what you spent it on. Again, like Bill said, the calculations on it, Full-time equivalence uh, is a separate component, but this is just the first component to show that it's all expended. So hopefully at the end, you can show an eight week period that it's all been expended and it's very easy. And even you can drive down, you know, we'll go over that in just a second, drive down on that to show the breakout of that and then show payroll reports, et cetera. So this is kind of the output that we're, that we're wanting our clients to be able to take to the lender to make it clean. Um, I'm going to stop this share real quick and I'm going to send it to Paula. And a, a lot of, I don't know, some, a lot of clients don't use class tracking. I mean, Paula, would you agree? I mean, some do, some don't. Yeah. Exactly. Not yeah, everybody so, does for sure. Yeah. And maybe you do your own books and records. Um, maybe you have your CPA, you know, do books and records or a bookkeeper, et cetera. So maybe if you see this, reach out to them and ask them if they're doing this class tracking. But if you don't know how to do the class tracking, Paul is going to walk you through real fast how to kind of set that up and, and make that happen. It's really easy. It's straightforward, but uh, sometimes the hard part is figuring out how to do it, not just doing it, but how to do it. So Paul, I'll walk her through or walk everybody through that if you don't mind and okay. kind of give the viewers a good indication how this works. Sure. It really is like Jared said, uh, just a few clicks of a button. So um, if you're in your QBO account on the dashboard, um, you just go over here to the gear icon and you'll see account settings. And when that pulls up, you're going to have an advanced tab over here on the left. And here in categories, you're gonna see track classes. And since this is the example client that we used, it's already on, but if yours isn't, just go over here to the pencil um, that's gonna open it up for editing. And then you just wanna be sure to click the track classes button. And I would advise clicking this uh, option to get a warning when a transaction isn't assigned a class. That'll just mean that before it, QuickBooks lets you save the transaction, it's going to remind you to enter that class so that you've got good reporting. Um, just leave this as it is, uh, one class to each row hit save, it'll do its thing and your track classes should show up as on. Just go down here and click done. And then it should bring you back out to the dashboard. Go back into the gear icon and here under list, go to all lists. And this will be where you set up the class. So you see here it's showing classes as one of your options. And you can see here that we've already got the PPP class set up, but the process for that is just to go over here to this new button. And let's just assume, just so you can see how this is done, that you also get an EIDL. So we'll say enter name EIDL. You of course would just choose PPP and click save. 
And now you can see you have both those classes set up. So now that you have your class tracking on and your classes set up, let's say you need to pay a bill. So you're going to go in like usual and write a check. Let's and um, like, like uh, let's say it's utilities. So we want to pay our utilities. We're going to choose that bank account that we have set up specific for PPV funds. Make sure all your dates are correct and everything. You're going to put it to utilities. And then when you come over here, let's say it's $200. And you'll notice now you have a field for class. Just go to that drop down, choose PPP and save. And then when you print that P&L report that Jared was showing earlier, then you'll have that expense reported in that PPP class. Yeah, that's perfect. And is there, is there a specific report, Paula, that they print? Is it, a, is it a profit and loss by class? Is that what it is? Is that what it's called? Yes, yes, yeah. um, profit and loss by class. Um, and you can you know, choose any period you want. Um, in the customize uh, field there, you can choose columns and get that percentage of income column on there so that you can show exactly what percentage of the, the proceeds you've used on you know, payroll or of the various other uh, expense categories. You can even filter it so you're just showing that PPP class if you don't want to, to show you know, your other um, expenses that don't fall under those categories. When you're going to take it to the bank, you'll want to make that as streamlined as possible. Jared, pull that report back up again real quick. There's a couple of key things I think we need to hit on before we we hop off here. Sure. Um, yep, we've got it. So keep in mind, guys, that this is something that there is still some complexity in this process. And, and you're going to want to spend time talk, having your accountant understanding them, whether they talk to their CPA, or whether they understand them. But you know, there's other things, for instance, healthcare, and there's other benefits that could be on here that are eligible uses. We just don't have them on this example. So as you're going through this, you know, what, what we do with our clients is, is if they, if we have a client who feels like it may be something, they're going to run it by us and we're going to say, yep, that's exactly how you code it. Or if we're doing the books for them, then we're going to make sure we code it if it is an appropriate expense. But this is not all inclusive. So you'll want to make sure that you, you have a good understanding of what costs are included. And, and in conjunction with that, you know, with the payroll, it's not necessarily going to be as simple as, as a, an amount in there, because if you have somebody who has an annualized salary of over a hundred thousand, then the only portion we can include in this calculation is going to be that prorated down a hundred thousand prorated down for that eight week period. So, you know, if they're scheduled to make 200,000, uh, we're not going to be able to put that entire amount paid over this eight week period in there. You're only going to be able to put in enough to get to that annualized a hundred. So again, it, it's, 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 a, it's a fairly simple way, but there are going to be some complexities you're going to have to work through. We strongly recommend you spend some time understanding the law or have your accountant do so. Make sure that you're in constant contact with them. Give them um, some of these reports and have them maybe help you understand to make sure. Again, this is, this is everything. I mean, there's components. You get the loan. It's the total. The first thing we got to do is, is make sure we spend the entirety of the loan on the right cost. And if we do that, then we got to figure out, you know, the other forgiveness components, which again, the guidance isn't there, but this is a huge step towards making sure that you're going to try to do everything you can to maximize that amount of forgiveness. So spend time, understand that. If you have any questions, ask your accountant. If you have any, if you're getting, um, you hit a brick wall, ask us. We're happy to help you have Yeah. And we make, you know, we also, like, like he said, the first thing, set up the separate bank account. You want to be able to make sure that you hand them, hand them almost like a file that shows exactly where the money was spent and how. Yeah. You froze up, Bill. You're back. You're good. Go um, yeah. So uh, Bill's exactly right. So like we said, this is just one way to track the PPP funds. Um, there's probably all kinds of different ways. We just see this very simple um, as Paula showed, you know, you can easily go in, set up those uh, classes. Um, it, again, it's just all about showing you spend all the money and then secondly, make it very easy on your lender. 
to um, to approve the forgiveness because uh, that's the biggest. You know, if you got the money now, we need to get it get it forgiven. So, if you guys have any questions, like Bill said, reach out to us. We're happy to help. Um, you'll see us in future videos. I'm sure talking about that second part, right? Talking about how the forgiveness works on the FTV FTEs in that calculation. So, Bill, Paul, appreciate you. Um, sure, we'll be together on a future video. Sorry for the freeze up, guys. You're good. We'll see you guys. Okay. See you.